Hi there, everyone. My name is Priyak Chaitani. Today, I'll be going over what it takes to match into neurosurgery. This has always been a specialty with a historically low match rate, but it was particularly defining this year in 2024. We'll be going over the 2024 data, talking about the average step 2CK score, how to stand out, and ultimately even research, which I know is becoming very controversial because of how much it's taking. With that being said, there's three main sources for this video, which will be linked in the description below. I will be going over the specific results for MD seniors, DO seniors, and then ultimately even IMGs. Um, the way we'll do this is that an MD senior is defined as someone who graduated from an MD institution and is a senior at that institution going straight into residency. The same thing for DOs. And then for IMGs, I'm going to break them down by US IMGs who are US citizens and doing an IMG, uh, AKA a uh, school um, internationally, and non-US IMGs who are non-US citizens going uh, international uh, medical school. Here's the match holistically in numbers. There were 241 neurological surgery spots. There are 414 total applicants. You'll see that for USMD seniors, there were 204 people who apply, uh, who matched out of 297 that applied. That's a 68% match rate for MD seniors. For USDO seniors, you'll see that 14 people applied, three match, which is a 21.4% match rate. For USIMGs, um, US citizens who, who went to IMG schools, 11 people People applied for match for non-US IMGs which are people who are um, not US citizens and IMGs 51 people applied and 16 matched all of this does not add up to 414 because there's other people who we do not consider here including people who may have graduated from an MD medical school taken a few gap years and are applying a bit later so now here are the different categories that we will talk about the average step 2 CK score for each of these types of um, people, the average number of research experiences, um, number of publications, posters, the percent of these individuals that come from a prestigious medical school who are in the top 40 of NIH um, funding, people with contigu contiguous ranks, how many ranks they placed on their rank list, the percent of people who are in AOA, which is an honor society in medical school, and the percent with another graduate degree. So let's get started. For each of these categories, I'm going to break them down by people who matched and who did not match in within the MD category, within the DO category, within the IMG US category, and non-US IMG category. Um, you'll see that this number is, again, not the same as the number you saw on this slide, primarily because some people don't allow their data ship to be shared, and some people do. So you'll see that the average Step 2 CK score, on general, uh, for people who match tends to be higher than people who did not match and specifically the people who match from the MD senior size It was 255 compared to 247 uh, for MDs who did not match for DO seniors It was 256 compared to 241 for those who did not match for IMGs who are US citizens It was 252 compared to 242 and 246 and 246 for non-US IMGs the average number of research experiences on general uh, was about the same for people who matched and who did not match. And one thing I want to bring up is for DO seniors, the people who did not match had more research experiences than the people who match, which tells me that research experiences is not as big of a thing as you might think. A research experience is defined as a lab that you work in. Even if that lab led to 30 publications, that's still one research experience. And that kind of explains why it's not as meaningful, because let's say you had one lab. If you have 10 labs, it doesn't matter if you don't produce anything from those labs. It's much more important to see the production. So even if you have 10 research experiences, it may not mean as much as four if you're not being productive with it. Similarly here, you'll see that non-US IMGs had 10 um, that did not match compared to 7.5 who did match. But now here's the part where things really get crazy, and some stuff here is just very hard to believe, but of the USMD seniors that match, there are People who match had 37.4 abstracts, publications, and posters compared to 31.4 of those who did not match. Similarly, USDO seniors who match had 23 uh, abstracts, publications, and posters compared to 11. So you'll see that these people who did not match had 10.9 research experiences, but only 11 things that came out of them as opposed to those who had four and had 23 come out. It's much more about your output, it sounds like. Whether, it's, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, 
again, is something I bring up every time because we don't want people to be doing research just for this, for like trying to get the number of publications up. And now here's where it's really, really crazy. Non-US IMGs who matched had 87.4 abstracts publications in poster compared to 51.1 for those who did not match. And similarly for US IMGs, it was 32.8 compared to 22.2. In general, the thing to think about here is clearly people who have more abstracts, publications, and posters are more likely to match. But that's not always the case. And of course, doing 87.8 sounds insane to me. And I'm not entirely positive if this is actually something that we should be valuing as a medical institution, just like obscene amounts of research without having a particular end goal in mind. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the percent of people from a top 40 medical school. And this is based on NIH funding. Um, people who go to DO schools usually don't, the DO institutions are newer, and so they don't have as much NIH funding. So this usually just applies to MD seniors. But you'll see that about 50% uh, of MD seniors who come from a top 40 medical school ended up matching compared to 25% uh, who come from a top uh, 40 medical school uh, did not um, and uh, were not did not match so basically of those who matched 50% came from a top medic uh, top 50, uh, top 40 medical school versus among those who did not match 25% came from a top 40 medical school one thing to remember here though is of the people that match 50% came from schools that are not top 40 prestigious medical schools not to mention there's multiple people who are US IMGs non US IMGs and DOs who matched so that doesn't have everything to do with it. It's just one of the factors I wanted to bring up as something to consider. Now, here's the rank that I think almost everyone knows. You'll see that the biggest predictor of whether or not you will match is the number of places you have on your rank list. The more places you have, the more places you get interviewed, the more places you list, the more likely you are to match. And so you'll see here for USMD seniors that match, they list 16.7 institutions on their list compared to 9.1 of those who did not match. The more places you list, the more likely you are to match. Again, the DO seniors who matched listed 10 compared to 4.2. For US IMGs, it was 7.5 compared to 2.6. And for non-US IMGs, it was 7.4 compared to 3.4. Now you can see that AOA is an honor society. Usually it's mostly in uh, MD institutions. And you'll see that 28% of the MD seniors who matched were in AOA, compared to 14% of the MD seniors who did not match were also still in AOA. That also means that 75% about of MD seniors who matched were not in AOA. But it also means about 86% of MD seniors who did not match were also not in AOA. And lastly, sometimes people think about other degrees. I don't think having another degree makes you particularly but more likely to match or less likely to match, and that's just what's shown here. Of the mat seniors who matched, 25.9% had another degree, but of the seniors who did not match MDYs, similar percent also had another degree. This kind of holds true across, right? So of the DO seniors who matched, 50% had another degree, which is just one of the two compared to 44.4%. Of the USIMGs who matched, 50% had another degree compared to 20% who did not match. And then 23.1% of non-USIMGs who matched had another degree compared to 167 in those who did not match. So hopefully this shows you more insights. My particular big takeaway here is just how crazy this 87.8 is. It's intimidating, but at the same time, it's just something I know happens. Whether it's a good thing or a bad thing is tough for me to ascertain. People clearly have great step 2 CK scores, but the biggest thing is getting those interviews because the more interviews you get, the more places you have in your rank list, the more likely you will be to match. I hope this was helpful for you. Neurosurgery is an incredible specialty. I hope people continue to go into it. It's very competitive, but hopefully this sets the landscape for what is to come in future years. If you like this video, please drop a like, comment, share, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.